Okay, so let's let's kind of take each lab separately. So let's start with the one where it was just the incline train. So, and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, there's going to be incline train problems on the test tomorrow. So, Devon Worldwide win. What are the three forces that are always present on any inclined plane problem? Uh, force, force, uh, force gravity. Which is always going to act straight down. And that's just mg. Don't worry about making that negative. That's just a gateway force that you're going to use to calculate everything else. That's one. Two more to go. Um, force parallel. Which always acts which direction? Uh, Up or down? Down. Down? You never have to worry about getting off the ski lift and gravity pushing you up the mountain. And the third one? Uh, force normal. Beautiful. Okay. Now, this force normal, here's what you have to be careful of. You all are used to saying, oh, force normal is the same as FG. And it is if you're on a flat surface, okay? But if you're on any kind of angle, that force normal, have, you have to take in to account that cosine theta part. Now, if you're afraid, oh, 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 maybe I'll forget about that. If you're, really, if you're afraid of that, if that's a concern. Even on a flat surface, you can take the cosine of zero, which just happens to be one. So if you're really uptight, it's like, oh man, I might forget about that on the test, okay? Well, you're on a flat surface, plug in the cosine of zero degrees, which is just going to get you one, FG is still going to be force normal. Same idea. Okay. So if you look at what's going to happen when you are pulling that block up the incline plane, okay? So the whole key to that is that there's two important words on that, this particular part of the lab. The two most important words are constant velocity, okay? Which means all the forces have to add up equal to zero in the direction of motion. So you measure some force applied. So, Miss Ellie, what was your force applied to pull that block up at a constant velocity? Kind of about... Oh, 2.35. 2 point what? 2.38. 2.38 newtons, okay? Now, here's the first thing I'm gonna look at when I grade her paper. She's gonna have two forces that are acting down the hill. She has to overcome force parallel, and she has to overcome force friction. So the first thing I'm gonna look at, does the sum of the force parallel and the force friction add up to 2.38 newtons? Okay, because you have two downward acting forces and you only have one upward acting force. So if you're not sure if you're right, find your force applied, find your force parallel, find your force friction. See if all of those values, those two, those two downward forces, the force parallel and the force friction, see if those add up to your applied force. Okay, if you did, you're okay. If these two forces don't add up to that 2.38 or whatever yours is, you've done something wrong, okay? Because if they don't, that means you're accelerating. So, if you did you define up as being positive? Okay? So, what I'm going to look for, okay? What I'm going to look for is that, number one, to these two values add up to 2.38, okay? Or whatever your applied force is. Did you consistently make those negative values? Okay, because if you define down as being negative, which you can, okay, or you can define it as being positive, I don't care, okay? Doesn't make me any difference. There's no right or wrong answer to that. And when you have your diagram, okay, when you have that diagram, here's what it should look like. You should have a 30 degree angle, here's some block. You should have a total of five forces. Force applied, force parallel, 
force friction, okay? So when you get done with that diagram, I should clearly be able to see your scale. Did you let one centimeter equal Newton? Did you let two centimeters equal Newton? What did you do with that? And then there should be all five of these forces listed. You applied your force friction, your force parallel, your force normal, and your FG. And these two forces here should, after, should add up to that applied force there. Okay, you got that? Odds are you did it right. Okay, now also make sure up the, up the top of this lab, in big bold letters, I even underlined it, it said show all calculations. Because all of your data is going to be different. So the only thing I can grade is your process, okay? I have no answer keys, okay? The only thing I can grade is your process. So you show me how you calculated force parallel, how you got force normal, how you got force friction, how you got mu, okay? And if, you, and if you're not sure if that's right, hand your lab to somebody beside you and go, hey, can you see all my work? And if they look at it and go, oh, I don't see how you got that. But if they can't see it, I probably can't see it either. Okay, so you're on those three problems down below. Problem number one, how much force? 28 degree inclined plane. That answer on number one should be around the legal drinking age. Okay, <clears throat> not what you think of it is during on prom weekend if your folks are out of town. Okay, should be something close to the legal drinking age. Both of your answers on 2 and 3 should be between 0 and 0.5, okay? Because you're talking about mass, not force, you're talking about mass. So here's the basic idea. On number 2, you're going to work number 2 just like you did number 1, okay? It's the exact same process. Find your force friction, find your force parallel. Those two forces are acting down the inclined plane. Find how much force it takes to pull it up, find that value, and then divide that by 9.8 meters per second squared to get the actual mass that you would suspend from the end of that pulley to drag that thing up. So what you should see is that your answer to number two is bigger than your answer to number three. Because in number three, the frictional mafia is helping you out because it's acting in the same direction because you're trying to keep it from sliding down. And on number two, the force, the frictional mafia is working against you, okay? So on number two and three, both of your answers are somewhere between zero and 0.5, with number two being the bigger value. Any questions on that lab? Are good? Once, twice, sold? Okay, now, on the question with the magnet, and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, there's going to be a question on the test tomorrow involving this situation. So here's the setup. Here was the magnet, okay? So here, the, here's kind of, let me take you through the thought process on how I wrote this lab. The first thing I had to do is say, okay, hey, let's just calculate that force parallel. You know the angle, you know the weight of the cart, boom, there you go, okay? So if there's no impeding forces, there's no friction, there's no squirrels, there's nothing else acting on it. If that's the only force acting on it, that is your net force, okay? And so when I ask you on... Uh, Deter on number four, on that procedure, determine the force acting to cause the car to accelerate down. I'm not as, I don't tell me force parallel. I know it's force parallel. I want the numeric value, okay? So on line four, do not just say, oh, that's force parallel. I know it's force parallel. I want the numeric value, okay? So then, Oddly enough, your answer to number five is the same as your answer to number four. Because if you assume that there is no friction, that is the force, that is your net force, because there's nothing impeding that motion, okay? So your acceleration on number six 
And this is this huge ish, okay, depending upon some things. But it should be something around negative 0.3, okay? It's an ish depending upon some angles and your mass, your card, and things like that. But as a ballpark answer, your answer to number six should be something around negative 0.3, okay? If you have negative five, something has gone horribly wrong, okay? So, here's the deal with this magnet. The magnet always acts as an imposing force to the motion, okay? It's what it does. The short version is that you induce a, a current in the plate. The plate opposes the change in the magnetic field created by the magnet. It acts as an opposing force. So just like friction always acts as an opposing force, the magnet, when it's moving between two non-ferrous materials, always acts and it's an opposing force. That magnet is never going to make this thing slow down. So that's actually what they use this technique on some roller coasters. So when they want to roll, slow a roller coaster down, instead of using brakes, they'll put a very, very strong magnet and they'll do just like what, ha what you guys did and they'll pa pass that roller coaster over this very, very strong magnet and that will create a braking force to slow down that roller coaster. Okay. So what you should see is that your times, when you put in that magnet, hopefully are larger than the times without the magnet. Okay, so here's your setting. So you had some force parallel which is acting to move this thing down the inclined plane. You have some force from the magnet. Just gravity stone. <laughs> it's always awkward. So. Thanks, Mr. Fisher. Nice guy. So, <laughs> calculator just jumped off the table. So, the force of the magnet is going to be some positive value because that's acting up because it's opposing the motion. So, here's the thought process. So, you're going to calculate the acceleration using displacement on time. So, on number five, on number five, you're going to use that 2D over T squared equals acceleration, okay? Pay attention to the sign of that acceleration. You're accelerating down the inclined plane. We're defining down as being negative. Make sure your answer to number five is a negative value because that's the direction that it's accelerating is down the inclined plane, okay? So make sure that's a negative value. So, then you're going to use that to calculate the net force, okay? So you're, this is an ish, okay? But your answer to number six is typically, and this is a huge ish, typically around negative 0.2 newtons, okay? That's an ish, okay? It's a very big ish, but it's typically around negative 0.2. So here's how you're going to do number seven. You're going to go force net, equals force applied plus your force parallel from the force of the magnet, okay? So the applied force is going to be your force parallel because that's what's making it move. So basically what's happening is that you have your force parallel acting down the inclined plane. You have the force in the magnet acting up the inclined plane. Okay, now obviously the net force is going to point down the inclined plane because that's the direction that it moves. So you know your force parallel, which is going to be some negative number, has to be bigger than the force from the magnet that's opposing it. Okay, just think this through. It's like, oh, which direction does it accelerate? Oh, so still accelerates down. So that force parallel negative has to be bigger than the force of the magnet going up. So that's your ultimate end game. So you're going to know the net force, okay? That's going to be your answer to number six, okay? You're going to know that number. That's your net force, which is the mass times the acceleration. Because remember, I cannot emphasize this enough. 
It is only, and I mean only, net force that equals mass times acceleration. Okay? Nothing else. It is only net force that equals mass times acceleration. Okay? So you're going to know the net force, which is going to be your answer to number six. Okay? You got, you're going to have that number. You're going to know your force parallel, okay? Because you found that over here on number four. Okay? So you're going to know that answer. Okay? So let's say that's negative 0.2. I'm just going to make up some numbers, Newtons. And let's say your force parallel is negative 0.3 Newtons. So how can you then define your force in the magnet? You can either do algebra, okay? If you want to do this, you can add 0.3 to both sides. That's as simple as it gets. Or if you just want to look at it and know, oh, okay, that has to be positive 0.1 Newtons, okay? So here's how you can check that you got this right. Take your, what you have as your answer to number seven, okay? Add that to your answer to number four on the front and see if that, if those numbers add up to your answer to number six, okay? If they do, you did it right. If they don't, you did something wrong, okay? Because that's the whole idea. If you hand in your test tomorrow and you have not done something that involves something like this with force parallel and magnet on a cart, you have done something wrong, okay? I'm going to tell you straight up, you have done something wrong, okay? So keep that in mind. So on number eight, here's what you should have. A very, 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 very shallow angle, because these angles were around two degrees. If you want to get fancy, you can put wheels on this thing. But you should have your FG, your force normal. Make sure that your gravitational force is acting straight down. And make sure your normal force is at a right angle to that incline. Okay, your force normal does not point straight up. It's at a little bit of an angle. And you should say, okay, hey, for my, for my FG and F force normal, what, did, what was your scale? Did you let two centimeters equal Newton? Did you let one centimeter equal Newton? Okay. Show me what that scale is. Then the other one is going to be the force from the magnet and your force parallel. Okay. And those should be a completely different scale because those numbers are so small. So maybe over here, then you go, oh, for my force parallel... And the magnet, maybe I let four centimeters equal one Newton or something like that. Okay, I don't care. So on number eight, I should see four forces, gravitational force, the normal force, the parallel, and the magnet. That angle has to be whatever your angle is. You just can't randomly make this up. Whatever your angle is is whatever you have on your diagram. So that's that. And then I should see two different scales. What was the scale that you used for the big numbers? What scale did you use for the smaller numbers? Okay. Now, if you want to hold on to these and hand them in, if you want to use these as like to study from, that's cool. You can hand that in tomorrow. If you're done with it and you're feeling good about it, that's cool too. But listen to me, when you hand these in, these are two completely separate labs. Okay, these are two, do not staple them all together, okay? I will go ballistic. So, you should have a vector diagram that goes with the inclined plane lab, and then you should have a vector diagram that goes with the magnet lab, okay? Do not staple them all together. Okay, so get that handed in.
Okay, so big, 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 big test. So here's how uh, the rest of the nine weeks is going to play out. So you've got that test over forces tomorrow. And then uh, we've got three days of projectile motion, which will put us Monday, Tuesday, no, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Then we'll review on Wednesday, and then your overall midterm final worth 20% of your grade is going to be a week from tomorrow. Okay, so we've got the tests on forces tomorrow, and then we have midterm final the following Thursday. Okay, so a midterm final is all multiple choice. That doesn't mean there aren't problems, but it's just going to be all multiple choice. Okay, so let's talk about the test for tomorrow. Let's start at the beginning. Sir Isaac Newton came up with three laws. So, one, two, three. Anybody remember, I can remember what the first law is? This is the only time I'm really going to expect you to know something specific. Okay, like Newton's first law, second law, third law. First law can be summarized in one word. It starts with letter I. Inertia. Inertia. Okay? So all this says is that Mother Nature is the late supreme dynamic. And whatever motion that you have is whatever motion Mother Nature wants you to have, keep. Okay? So if you're at rest, Mother Nature is going, I'm cool with that. Stay at rest. But Mother Nature also says, hey, if you're moving, you can keep moving until an outside force acts upon it. So remember, there's only one thing and one thing at all that affects inertia, and that is mass. So if I have <coughs> Hank the bowling ball versus this little plastic water molecule, okay, no matter where I am in the universe, it's going to be harder to get Hank to accelerate. Because Hank has a lot more mass, Hank has a lot more stuff, okay? Hank really, 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 really wants to start, wants to stay at rest because there's so much stuff to move. Little plastic water molecule, hey, look at me, okay? Back and forth, right? Doesn't have much mass. It's very easy to make it speed up and slow down. Hank, not so much, okay? But once I get Hank moving, it's very difficult to get Hank to stop. Because once that mass is in motion, then it wants to stay in motion. So I'll put my hand out here, you know, and I'll drop that. Hey, not a big deal. Love y'all to death. I'm not going to demonstrate inertia by dropping my dropping a bowling ball on my hand. Like, Burkamp, what happened to your hand? Ah, uh, physics demonstration gone bad. Dropped it, you know, for the sake of my kids. <laughs> You're an idiot. And I said, man, it wasn't my brightest move. So love y'all to death. I'm not going to drop Hank onto my hand. Now, the second law is what's hanging up there behind Angel, and that's technically your net force equaling mass times acceleration. But it isn't any mass, it, it, excuse me, it isn't any generic force. It's always the net force that equals mass times acceleration. So, and that net force, remember, is always going to be the sum of all the forces that are acting on the system, okay? That's it. Always. That's it. Now, third law says that for every action, there is a reaction. In other words, forces are coupled. So if I take this and I draw a Hank on the table, okay, obviously the table exerts an upward force on Hank. Hank exerts a downward force on the table. Those two forces are equal and opposite. I lift up Hank, okay? So I'm exerting an upward force on Hank. Hank is exerting an equal and opposite force down on me. If I drop Hank, okay, this is obviously not the scale, but so here's the earth and here's Hank. I drop Hank. Obviously there's the force being exerted on Hank because Hank accelerates towards the earth. By Newton's third law, the Earth exerts an upward, uh, Hank exerts an equal and opposite force on the Earth. Okay, now 
Thankfully, the Earth doesn't have an equal and opposite acceleration because if the Earth had an equal and opposite acceleration, the Earth would begin to move up at the same rate that Hank begins to move down, which would be really weird. Okay? So, forces are coupled. They're equal and opposite. I don't care how you think about it. Okay, so make sure that you have a brief understanding of the three laws. And I will specifically say, hey, this is Newton's first law. This is Newton's second law. This is Newton's third law. It'll be the multiple choice portion of the test. Okay, I'll even tell you where it's going to be, front page. That's where it's going to be. Now, there are, count them, as best we understand them now. There's four fundamental forces. Okay, so we're going to go old school on this one. Four fundamental forces. Carson, what's one of them? Gravity. gravity. Okay. So gravity is the great sculptor of the universe. It's always attractive. It's dependent upon mass. If you, as you increase the mass, you increase the gravitational field. That's why the Earth, that's one of the reasons the Earth has an atmosphere. It's because we have a strong enough gravitational field to hold the gases that are <coughs> present. Okay? Um, what's another one? Hector, what's another one? Normal. Huh? Normal force. Nope, nope, nope. That, that's, nope, 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 nope. Normal force is not one of the four fundamental forces. Jack. Friction? Nope. It's a really, really long word. It starts with the letter E. Rhymes with traumatic. Electromagnetic. There you go, electromagnetic force. Okay? So, the electromagnetic force is what creates the normal force. It's what creates friction. So when you rub your hands together, okay, it's cold outside, and you've lost your mittens, and you do this, right? That's the electromagnetic force, because it's creating friction. The electromagnetic force creates, stops this bowling ball from falling through the center of the Earth. The electromagnetic force provides us light. The electromagnetic force allows us to make toast, okay? The electromagnetic force allows you to see that mark, okay? So the electromagnetic force is the most diverse of all of the forces, okay? That's it, okay? So probably when in doubt, unless it's something very specific, like, oh, what makes a, a ball fall? Odds are it's probably the electromagnetic force, okay? But you have to have the electromagnetic force, you have to have two things. You have to have two charged particles. So without the electromagnetic force, we wouldn't be here. Because without the electromagnetic force, the universe would just exist as mass. But because of the fact that we have protons and electrons that are positive and negatively charged, that's what allows those atoms to link together. Because if you can't link atoms together, we don't exist. Because then we're just separate atoms that are just floating around. So because of the fact that we can chain link these atoms together, that's what allows us to be here, okay? So without that electromagnetic force, we wouldn't have water, we wouldn't have plastic, we wouldn't have Devon Worldwide Wind, okay? You know, penguins, whatever, all right? So how you arrange those atoms determines what you get. Okay, so this is one that creates friction, okay? Without that, you don't have that. It allows you to write, okay? You take your pencil and you're going to mark A on your test tomorrow. Oh, well, that's cool because the electromagnetic force attracts the particles from your pencil. They stick on your paper. You look down on your paper and you go, oh, look, I wrote the letter A. And that exists because of the electromagnetic force. Now, the other ones only exist within the nucleus. One is the strong nuclear force. And that's the one 
that holds atoms together, the, the, the nucleus of the atoms together. Because the protons that make up every atom of your body don't want to be near each other. Okay? They want to all go flying apart because, they're, because they all have the same charge. So the protons don't want to be near each other. The strong nuclear force overcomes that, and that's what allows us to have a very, very small, dense nucleus. So without the strong nuclear force, guess what? We're not here because then you couldn't have a nucleus. You couldn't have the protons sticking together. So the strong nuclear force is, here's the dichotomy. It's the strongest of all the forces. And I'm going to ask you this question. I swear to God, you mark my words. It's going to be a multiple choice question. I'm going to ask you, what's the strong, what is the strongest of the four forces? I'm going to ask you this question tomorrow, okay? And I'm going to give you all four choices. Gravity, electromagnetic, strong nuclear, weak nuclear. Okay, when I ask you the strongest force, don't miss the question. It's the strong force. Okay? It's the one I ask you. It's going to be multiple choice. Don't miss the question. And I want to write at the end of this question, I will flunk you if you miss this question. I know it won't, but it's a good throw. So the fourth one is the weak nuclear. Okay? Don't pick whatever the question is. The answer is not the weak nuclear force. Okay, do not pick the weak nuclear force. I'm going to put it there. Don't pick it. All right, it's important. I'm not discounting the weak nuclear force. Without the weak nuclear force, the sun would not be able to fuse hydrogen into helium and release energy, and our, our star would not shine, okay, and we wouldn't be here, okay? So I'm not discounting the weak nuclear force. Don't think, man, Burke can't diss on the weak nuclear force, okay? No, it's important. It's vitally important. It's just not something that we're going to study. Okay? So, on a multiple choice test, don't ever, for my, at least in my class, don't pick the weak nuclear force. It's not going to be one of the answers. I want to list it, see if you pay attention, but don't pick, don't pick the weak nuclear force. The weakest force is actually gravity. Of the four forces, gravity is actually the weakest of the four forces. Okay. So, Let's talk about some things that are going to be on the test. Oddly enough, the idea that force net equals force applied plus force opposed. I promise you, that is, going to be the, that is going to be the heart and soul, bread and butter, however you want to call it, of the test. Okay? Here's, here's going to be the first example of how this is going to play out. It's going to be the bottom of the front page. I'll tell you exactly where this question is going to be. It's going to be on the bottom of the front page. And I'm going to give you a certain rocket, okay? And I'm going to tell you that the mass of the rocket is uh, 10.2 kilograms, okay? Whatever the number is, I'm going to say, hey, here's the mass of the rocket, 10.2 kilograms. And then we're going to launch this thing up with an upward force of uh, 200 newtons, okay? And then I'm going to ask you to calculate the acceleration of the rocket. Okay? Promise you. This is how it's going to play out. Okay? Bottom, front page. I'm going to say, hey, draw a free body diagram. You're going to go, okay, hey, that's my 200 newtons. Now, the first thing that you've got to figure out is the 200 newtons, it's going to be one of three things. Is the 200 newtons my applied force, my opposing force, or my net force? Adana. Which is it? Yeah. Bingo. That's my applied force. Okay? This is how much money you have to spend. Okay? Now, unless I explicitly tell you one of two things, either ignore gravity, like you're in deep, deep space and the effects of gravity can be reasonably ignored, or if I tell you that it's a frictionless surface, you figure out what you have to pay the mafia, okay? So unless I tell you not to worry about the mafia, you pay off the mafia, okay? Now, since this thing is going to be launched straight up, how can I figure out how much money the mafia is going to take? Is it? 
Fantastic. So somebody take 10.2 kilograms. Because basically, here's how here's how the mafia determines their rate. They say for every 10.2 kilograms of mass you want to get up in the air, they're going to charge $9.80. That's their fee. Okay, that's it. They're going to charge $9.80 per kilogram that you want to get up in the air. Okay? That's what it's going to charge. So, somebody, Devin, can you, or somebody, Carlson? It's um, 99.96. So, what's it called? 100. Okay? 100. Okay? And I want to make that negative because that's going to be acting downward. So here's the story. So I've got $200. I've got to pay $100 of that to the Gravity Mafia. So what do I have left? 100 bucks, right? So you sit here and when in doubt, you set up a chart. Go force applied, force opposing, force net. Okay, literally, if you, if you don't know what to do, if you get into a problem, you go, man, I got nothing. Start with this chart. Figure out what the forces are. Figure out which direction those forces are acting. Now, <coughs> hey, of those three forces, what is the only one, what is the only one of those three that equals mass times acceleration? And it's only force net that equals mass times acceleration. Okay? So here's what you're going to do wrong. You mark my words. This is what you're going to do wrong. And you all sit there today and you go, Mr. Brickham, we won't do that. And you lie. You lie. Here's what you're going to do wrong. You're going to take 200 newtons and you're going to go, oh, force equals mass times acceleration. Oh, I got this. Cool, right? And you're going to take 200 newtons and you're going to divide that by 10.2 by kilograms and you're not going to pay off the gravity mafia. Okay, that's what you're going to do wrong. I swear to God, that's what you're going to do wrong. And you all sit there and go, Mr. McKenna, don't be silly. You told us we'll do that. We, we won't do that. Yes, you will. Okay? You, so you have to look at this and go, okay, what's going to happen? Are there any forces working against this applied force. And in this case, that opposing force is negative 100. That gives me a net force of 100. That is what I can divide by the mass to get my acceleration. Okay? Trust me. That's what you have to do. So when in doubt, sit here and go, okay, here's my force applied. And then ask yourself, huh, what's working against that? Oh, that's gravity. So I got a negative 100 Newton force acting down. I got a net force of 100. Now, what if my applied force is 80 Newtons? And my applied force in the rocket engines is 80 Newtons. And it weighs 100 Newtons. What will be the acceleration of the rocket? Derek. The upward force from the rocket engines is 80 newtons. It's sitting on a launch pad. It weighs 100 newtons. What's the acceleration of the rocket? Do not make this difficult. You are making this difficult. Derek, you're in the gym. How much can you deadlift, roughly? 545. Okay. You have a barbell and weights that weigh 600 pounds. You're exerting an upward force of 545. What's going to be the acceleration of that barbell? Yeah. Why? Because I'm not exerting enough force. Your upward force is less than the downward force. Yes. The rocket applies an upward force of 80 newtons. It weighs 100 newtons. What's the acceleration of the rocket? Zero. Zero. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay? It's going to look cool. Okay? You're going to get smoke, fire, flame. <coughs> the engine's going to go. Okay? And everybody's going to go, cool. 
Why is the rocket go anywhere? Because the upward force is less than the downward force of gravity. Okay? It's going to happen. I take my cup. I apply a force to it. Okay? I'm pushing on this cup. It doesn't accelerate. Why? I'm applying a force. Why doesn't it accelerate? Same idea. I'm pushing on it, but what's, what's holding it in place? Friction. The friction mafia. I'm pushing on it, but if my applied force is less than the frictional mafia, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay? I take this massive bowling ball, right? I exert some upward force on it, right? It's not going anywhere because my upward force is less than the downward force of gravity. So just because you exert a force on an object doesn't mean it's going to accelerate. Now, there is one situation where the applied force and the net force in terms of a rocket are the same thing. There's only one situation, and one situation only, where my applied force is my net force. What's that one situation? If there's no what? There's no gravity, okay? If I explicitly tell you, and there's going to be a problem like this, it's going to be on the back of the front page, okay? It's going to be on the back of the front page. If I tell you explicitly that there is no gravity, if I explicitly tell you that there is no gravity, then you can take that applied force and say that's my net force and take that 200 newtons and divide it by the mass. But that's the only time, okay? Otherwise, you have to pay that off. Uh, Let's say you have an elevator. There's going to be an elevator problem or a helicopter, one of the two. Uh, let's stick with that mass of uh, 10.2 kilograms. And I want this thing to accelerate upward at 2 meters per second squared. I want to know how much upward force has to be applied. Okay, so visualize this. I'm going to pull up at 200, I'm going to make this elevator accelerate upward at 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so I'm here, boom, going to accelerate upward. Mass is 10.2 kilograms. I want to know how much tension has to be on that cable to make that happen. Okay? Now, obviously at some point I need to take mass times acceleration. Okay, I need to do that. Izzy, do us a favor. Take 10.2 times 2. 20.4. 20.4. Now, here's the question. Is that 20.4 newtons, is that my applied force, my opposing force, or my net force? Jaden, I, take, I took 10.2, I took the mass times my acceleration. Is that my net force, my applied force, or my opposing force? Net force. Beautiful. That's my net force. Now, think this through. Just think this through, I beg of you. Think this through. This thing weighs 10.2 kilograms. Okay, that's its mass. We just said if I multiply that by G, I get 100 newtons. Okay? So just think this through. If I'm just holding this elevator up, okay, if I'm just holding up the elevator, I have to apply a force of 100 newtons just to hold the elevator, okay? So at a minimum, just to hold the elevator, I have to exert 100 newtons of force, right? Minimum of 100. Now, imagine that you're down in the gym, okay? You want to lift up a barbell, okay? Well, not only do you have to overcome the weight of the barbell, you also have to add in the additional force it takes to accelerate. So whatever upward force I have has to be bigger than 100 because at a minimum, it's going to be 100 plus the additional force that it takes to accelerate it upward. So 
If you're a chart kind of person, Ms. Burkamp, I live for charts. Okay, so force applied, force opposing, force net. So that 20.4 newtons is my net force. Okay, that's mass times acceleration. Boom, that's our 20.4. My opposing force is going to be 100 newtons because that's the weight of the elevator. So that's going to be negative 100. So how much applied force do I have to have? Mr. Fisher. It would have to be, or that is so. So help me, if you touch that, if you touch that calculator, I'm, I'm going to flip it. 70.6, no. 80.6, 79.6. No. Hold on. Hold You're on. making it difficult. Is it not? Something plus negative 100 equals 20.4. 120. 120.4. Oh, 120.4. That's why I said you were making this so difficult. Okay? When you have a problem like this, and it's going to be on the back of the front page. I'm going to tell you, it's in the middle, middle page. Okay, this is going to be. When you get that answer, work backwards, okay? Because I'm going to ask you to find the tension of the cable or the force to lift the helicopter or whatever it's going to be. It's going to be a problem like this, okay? Take your, what, take your answer, subtract out the weight, get a net force, divide it by the mass, see if you get the acceleration that I gave you, okay? If you did, hey, you did it right. If you don't, it's a train wreck, okay? And here's what you're going to do wrong. I swear to you, this is what you're going to do wrong. You're going to take the 10.2 kilograms, multiply that by that acceleration, and you're going to get 20.4 newtons, and you're, going to, and you're going to go, there's my answer. Okay? All you did was found the net force. You didn't find the applied force. Okay? That's what you're going to do wrong. So that's going to happen. I promise you there's going to be questions off that limb lab, okay, where you did the computer simulation. Okay? I promise you there's going to be questions like off of that. It's the same concept. Force net, force applied, force opposing. Okay? So go back and rework through that lab. Okay? Especially that front, that front page that you all had to do the calculations on. Okay? Go back. Start from scratch. Okay? Ignore any work that you have done. Go through and work those problems. See if you can work them. On the back side, the very back side of that lab, you had a velocity time graph, and up above that you had like you had two problems where you had to calculate the force to get a, a certain acceleration. Okay? Go back and work those problems. Go, oh, do I remember how to do those? I promise you, there's gonna be questions on the limb. It's gonna be bottom of page two. Okay, when you flip the test over, bottom of page two, that's where that's going to be. On the net forces, you all did an assignment on net forces, okay? Fundamentals of net force follies, that was the title of it, okay? I think it was on purple paper. On that, you had two big problems. One involving pushing a block, and I gave you the frictional force, and another one where I gave you a rocket and you had to draw a velocity time graph, okay? And calculate all the forces and draw the vector diagrams and all that good stuff. I promise you, you mark my words, one of those two problems, if not both, are going to be on that test, okay? So go back, find that <coughs> fundamentals of net force follows. You all have these assignments back to you. It isn't like, oh man, we handed those in and Burkamp never got us back to us. I didn't know, I couldn't, I couldn't study because he never gave us back our assignments. For the love of God, if you say that to anyone, I will personally, I don't know what I'll do to you, but it's not gonna be pleasant. So you have, everything back to you you have you know exactly what you've done wrong okay go back work those problems from scratch okay all right so let's go to the back and i'll show you another problem that's going to be on the test So here's the other type of problem that I promise you is going to be on the test. Okay, it's going to be on the, it's going to be on the very last page of the test. That's exactly where this is going to happen. So I'm going to give you a mass 
on the end of the string, which in this case is 50 grams, okay? And I'm gonna give you the mass of the cart, and initially, this is going to be a frictionless surface. So when I let go of it, okay, boom, here we go, right? And, I, and there's no friction. I'm gonna ask you to calculate the acceleration of the system. I let go of it, doink, here we go. So what's the only force available to make this system accelerate? Pulling on what? The mass on the end. Pulling on the mass at the end. You're going, to take, you're going to take this mass, 50 grams, convert that into kilograms, divide by 1,000, multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared, which in this case is going to be 0.49 newtons. Okay? So I got 0.49 newtons here, right? That's the net force. We're assuming that this is frictionless. We're assuming that this is flat. Okay? So the only force available is that. There is no opposing force. Gravity is pulling down on this thing, but the table is providing an equal and opposite force. So the only force available is this. Boom, we let go of it. Now, that's 0.49 newtons. I need to calculate an acceleration. Am I going to divide that 0.49 newtons by the 50 grams, by the mass of the cart, or the combined mass? Maybe, Martin. Can you say the force my, my, my net force is that 0.49 newtons pulling down. Mm -hmm. I need to calculate an acceleration, so I need to take that 0.49 newtons and divide it by mass. So here's the question. Do I divide it by the mass that's on the end of the string? Do I divide it by the mass of the cart? Or do I divide it by the combined mass? Beautiful. Always, always, always divide by the combined mass of the system. Because that 50 gram mass doesn't want to move. This cart doesn't want to move. So the net force, which is just going to be that, to get my acceleration, I'm going to divide that weight hanging down by the combined mass of the entire system. Boom, there's going to be my acceleration. Now, when I do this, let's say I take another 50 gram mass. Okay, so imagine this. I've got a 50 gram mass hooked up to the string. I'm going to drop a 50 gram mass at the exact same time. Which one's going to hit the ground first? Jack? The one that you drop. Why? Because it only has, the gravity is only affecting that one, so only that's accelerating. Okay, and we're not dragging this with it. Okay, so this is, this is Jaden going out and dragging her brother. Okay, this is Jaden, boom. Just take it. So when I do this, ow. when I do this, okay, so we'll do, just verify that the laws of physics do work. So three, two, one, boom. Okay, not even close, right? So when you calculate an acceleration when you're dragging something, you will never get an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. It always has to be less than 9.8 meters per second squared because you're dragging something with it, okay? All right, now, what if I turn this crossways, okay? So now, I'm gonna turn this thing crossways. It's not gonna go straight with the tracks. It's not, I'm gonna turn it so it's gonna be like this. Now, what's gonna happen to the acceleration once I turn it crossways and I've introduced friction? It's gonna decrease. Decrease, why? What do you have now? An opposing force. Now I have an opposing force. Now the frictional mafia is involved. The frictional mafia is going, oh, you crossways to us. I'm going to make you slow down. Right? When I turn it crossways, do I change my applied force? Exact same. Still 50 grams on the end of the string. But now I have an opposing force. Now, if I turn it completely sideways, why doesn't it accelerate? There you go. Okay. My frictional, well, the frictional mafia is holding it back. So much so that even though it's being pulled down, it's not accelerating. So when you have friction, and you are going to have friction, okay, you mark my words, you are going to have friction. Friction only occurs between this cart and, and the table. Do not, 
do not, do not, when you calculate force friction, include the weight of what's there on the end. That weight has nothing to do with the frictional force because friction only occurs between these two surfaces. Okay, now, I want to change it up a little bit. Can you hold that in place for one second? Beautiful. Okay, got it. Okay, now, what's changed? Have I changed my applied force? Why not? Because it's the same mass thing out the end? Same mass, same, same gravitational field, same applied force. But now I put a board underneath there. So now what have I introduced? Rhymes with force parallel. Force parallel. Force parallel, right? Now, Miss Ellie, which direction is force parallel always act? Opposite. Oh, same way, same. Uphill. Downhill. Downhill. Okay. <laughs> Downhill. You sure? Positive. Okay, thank God. Okay. I am not going to let go of this, and gravity is going to make it go faster. Woo! Here we go. Wow, we're hauling now. No. Okay? No. Force parallel always acts down the inclined plane. Now, when I let go of this, which direction does it accelerate? Let's make this simple. Oh, so which one's bigger, the force parallel or the gravitational force acting down? Gravitational force acting down, right? So my applied force is bigger than my force parallel. The difference between those two is my net force. To get my acceleration, I'm still going to divide it by the combined mass. And I promise you, you're going to have a problem like this. If you get done with that test and you hand that in and you have not calculated force parallel a couple times, you have done something horribly wrong, okay? Promise you. Force parallel always acts downhill. downhill. Now we're going to make it even more complicated. Now I'm going to put the magnet in there. Okay, now the magnet, and I'm going to tell you this on the test, is always going to act as an opposing force. Okay, you're going to have a problem like this on the test. I swear to you, you're going to have three things involved. You're going to have a weight hanging from the end of a string, you're going to have an inclined plane, and you're going to have a magnet. Okay? All three things are going to get lumped into one big problem. It's going to be at the top of the last page. I'll even tell you where it's going to be, the top of the last page. Now, when I let go of this, now an interesting thing happens. When I let go of this, it begins to accelerate, right? So, what are the forces acting on this cart? If I said, just let's just look at the cart. What are some forces acting on that cart? Peyton, what's one of them? No applied force. Okay, so I have an applied force going this way, right? That's one of them. Izzy, what's another one? Force parallel. Force parallel, which is acting? Downhill. So I got the weight trying to pull it. I've got force parallel trying to pull it down. Okay, so the gravity mafia is acting downhill. Now, what's the third force acting on this motion? Tyler. So, wait. The, the force that the mag... Keep going. The force that the magnet exerts with that, you can do friction? Yes. Okay. It's, like, it's like friction. Okay. Okay? So, this is acting like a frictional force. And the frictional force always acts in the opposite direction of motion. So when you have the magnet, it all, the magnet, 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 magnet will always, always, always act in the opposite direction of motion. So if this thing is rolling downhill, the magnet is acting uphill. If it's moving uphill, the magnet's acting downhill. So the magnet acts like the friction, okay? So basically the frictional mafia branched out and they farmed out their work to the magnet. The frictional mafia is going, we got to go to Chicago to deal with some business. Magnet, we need you to take, stay here and take care of this. So the magnet is acting like the frictional mafia, okay? And it always impedes motion. So when I let go of this, 
You have an applied force going this way, trying to drag it in this direction. You have the force parallel acting down the hill. You have the magnet acting down the hill. Which of those three has to be the biggest? Bingo, because that's the direction that it moves. So I know my applied force going this way has to be bigger than the frictional force going in the opposite direction and bigger than the force parallel. So when I add these two downward forces here, that's going to be less than the applied force going this way. Now I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to take off the 50 and then I'm going to put on a 20. Okay. So now when I let go of it, it accelerates down the hill. So now it's accelerating down the hill. Miss Elliot, which direction is force parallel acting? Down the hill. Down the hill. When I let go of it, my force parallel is acting down the hill. Cool with this. I let go of it. It accelerates down the hill. Which direction is the magnet acting? Up the hill. Which is the direction created by the applied force? Up the hill. Now, this is the opposite. If I let go of this and it begins to accelerate down the hill, I only have one force going down the hill, and that is my force parallel. parallel. The other two forces are acting up the hill. Which one's bigger, the force parallel going down or the two forces acting up? Parallel. Force parallel. So in this problem, I'm going to take it straight up. I'm going to define the system for you. You all don't need to vote. Downhill is going to be defined as negative. Uphill is going to be defined as positive. Now, when I get done, you're going to calculate an acceleration. Which mass are you going to use? The 20 gram, the cart, or the combined mass? Jaden? Combined. Always, 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 always divide by the combined mass. So when you get done, if you haven't worked a problem like this, you have done something horribly wrong. Okay? And it's going to involve all three. I'm going to tell you straight up. There's going to be mass at the end. There's going to be a cart, and there's going to be a magnet. And I'm going to give you the force from the magnet. You won't have to calculate that one. I'm going to give you that value. And I'm going to tell you it's an imposing force. So if this thing accelerates down the hill, that force from the magnet is acting up the hill. If this thing moves up the hill, the force from the magnet is acting down the hill. Got it? Good? Grand? Okay, stop that. Let's go back. Okay. So, on the review, this is going to be the most daunting of the tests you've had so far, mainly because it's going to involve acceleration, it's going to involve forces. But basically, this test boils down to one idea, that force net equals force applied plus force opposing. Okay? Now, you have a whole bunch of things within that. You have force parallel. You have force friction. You have gravity. Okay? There's a whole bunch of sub-forces that exist. But at the end of the day, it's force net equals force applied plus force opposing. Now, if I were you all, number one, you have a blank one. I would treat this, I would treat this as the test. Okay? I would try and work every problem on here without even looking at what I did. I would physically hide this so I couldn't see it, okay? And then I would try and work that problem. If push comes to shove, if you're short on time, work number 17 on the back, okay? Because this is where you have a mass suspended where you have the 950 and the 200. There's gonna be one like 20, which is this Atwood machine where you have two masses suspended over a pulley, okay? Promise you there's gonna be questions like that. So make sure you can do 17, make sure you can do 20. 
On number six on the front, this is this big rocket problem involving the Saturn V rocket, which is what got us to the moon on the Apollo missions. Make sure that you can do that and ask yourself the what if game. What happens if we reduce the effect of gravity? If I reduce the effect of gravity, what does that do to my net force? What does that do to my applied force? What does that do to my opposing force? Okay, that's what you want to be able to think through. Uh, make sure on number 12, okay, here's your inclined plane problem. If you can do that one, you should feel good about life. Uh, on 16, 16 is like, almost like a rocket problem, other than the fact that we're using a balloon, okay? Make sure you can do that one. So, and I cannot emphasize this enough. You have to work these problems again and again and again. Make flashcards. Oh, what do I know about force parallel? What do I know about Atwood machines? What do I know about rocket problems? The more you write down, the more you think through problems, the better off you're going to be. Okay, I'm done. You're on your own. I get an answer phone.